Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for immersive students. And they even have career services that can help you with job placement after you graduated. Dev Mountain loves hearing from my subscribers, so be sure to click on the link in the description tab below if you or somebody you know is ready to dive into coding and design. Hey guys, what's up? All right, so in this video, what I wanna talk about is Nest.js. And honestly, this is like the best project I've seen in a long time, and I just wanna share it with you all. And I'm gonna explain a few reasons why you should learn it if you're interested. Uh, but what is Nest.js? This is, um, it, it's called Nest.js because it's built off of Node.js. Everybody's familiar with Node.js. Node.js powers things like Express, the web framework built on top of it, and like a million and a half other things from Meteor to a bunch of other stuff. Um, the reason why I love Nest though is Nest is built on top of two of the most popular uh, server-side stacks for Node.js in existence right now. One of them being Express.js, which is probably the most popular and most widely used Node.js uh, framework. Now you can get started with this very, very quickly. However, once you start getting into setting up a RESTful service, maybe mixed with an MVC app, um, maybe mixed with some authentication, authorization, you really start to run into some major problems and stuff with just Express. So it is a minimal framework. It's not batteries included. Even when it comes to like, okay, you want to do authentication. Okay, now you do Passport, but you're on your own implementing Passport. You're on your own uh, implementing encryption and all that stuff. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, especially beginner developers, they're just not going to be able to do all that. Another reason why Nest is awesome is that it also is a wrapper around Fastify. So this is another framework. In fact, I had it as my number one framework, I think last year. And it's a great framework, like it does a ton. And I have tutorials on there uh, for free on YouTube that shows you how to set up everything from RESTful stuff. I think I do authentication, full stack. Anyway, um, I do have videos on it, but Nest gives you the option of whether or not you wanna wrap either Express or Fastify and it wraps Express by default. But if you do like Fastify, you can use that. So why would you want a wrapper? A wrapper is gonna save you a ton of time when it comes to writing your code. Uh, this project is, uh, it, it provides a ton. So if we jump into the documentation real quick, it's gonna give you the first steps and it can seem really daunting because you have to install this as a tool and then you use the tool to then start up your project. And then the tool itself is also going to have built-in capabilities very similar to something like Django, where you could use the Django admin to start the server. Uh, this is similar. You can use the, the Django admin to create a new um, a module if you guys have ever done Python Django development. It's the, it's the same thing here. So if you wanna add a new controller, um, I have a cat's endpoint or something like that, then um, you could just use the Nest CLI tool, which is gonna spin up a lot of the, the core code that you need. All right, so as an example, if we go to the controller section on the documentation here, you can see that um, it just explains what the controllers is. It's a big wrapper. So, okay, you wanna add a new, um, a books API or something, a, a books, movies, whatever it is, um, you're, you're gonna add a new endpoint. And those endpoints typically need CRUD applications, right? Create, create, read, update, and delete. And it's going to provide all that stuff for you, including routing and all that. Um, but it has this built-in nest create uh, controller cat. So to see that, I'll just go ahead and pull up this application. I ran that. It created a bunch of this, uh, th this scaffolding that we need for the controller. It might look a little complicated at first. It's really more complicated looking when you first look at it compared to when you dive into it. Similar to like JSX. JSX was the ugliest thing for the, a lot of us web developers, and eventually it kind of grows on you. But the, this is very declarative, declarative styling, um, or it's a declarative form of programming. So it's, it takes a lot for some people to get used to that. I remember when I was getting into from like Python into C Sharp, like C Sharp uh, used these declarations all the time compared to Python. Um, but then Python started using them too. It's the same thing with Django and all that other stuff. So you get used to it, but it's going to save you a lot of time. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm actually setting my uh, my parameters and here this is the wild card so I can just go ahead and get whatever uh, value I'm looking for and then you can see like if I'm asking if I'm asking for all the the resources then I'm gonna get all of them back so let's go ahead and take a look at this 
So here is the application running on port 3002. It's hello world. If I go to my cats and I now grab all the cats, you can see I get the response back. Now clearly this is gonna hit some sort of a database somewhere or something. Even if it's a local file system, um, it's going to return something a little bit more meaningful than that, obviously. But if I just wanted to use, uh, it, well, I need to actually use it on my cats, uh, cats query. And then this, you can see, returns one. It's really returning whatever the wild card is. So this action returns one. Um, I could say two. But this really is going to be the name. Like this is like, um, you know, fuzzy is this guy's name returns fuzzy effing uh, anyway you guys get the point um so here is a better example though one of the things that i'm working on um that i spent some time over the weekend is i was just like how do i get nest.js um in line with some of these modern client-side libraries now nest.js is really just a back-end server-side stack it's not meant to be cl um, client-side that means it's not supposed to handle your react your angular or any of that stuff so let me just take a few moments here to explain this architecture and how I've been able to figure out how to get Nest up and running with React. And really, you could do the same thing with Angular or Vue um, as well. But there was a few things that I needed to do. So when I, when I spun up the basic uh, application that's given to me out of the box, it doesn't even include a template engine or anything like that. So that was the first thing I did is I implemented MVC. So I had to update the like the main... Um, the main portion of this so that it would listen for static files and serve those. So static meaning images, JavaScript, uh, CSS. And then I have my base views directory. So what I did is I implemented this to use the handlebars template engine uh, for server side rendering. So this all gets compiled on the server side and then sent down. Um, so that, that way it, it's, there's no, uh, it, it, there's no search engine optimization penalty or anything like that. Now, you could use a uh, server-side React on the Node uh, side if you wanted to, and that's actually something I'll probably explore later on. So I don't have to use handlebars. I could just use React all the way down, uh, just like with Next.js. But with this Nest.js, and by the way, those are some two confusing-ass names. It's almost like they tried to copy off each other or something. Nest and Next, like why? Um, I'll say I like both of the projects, but Nest.js, uh, I give that the nod. I think that's the winner because it gets out of your way. Like like I said, it doesn't even come with a template engine, so I chose uh, to use Mustache, but you could use like uh, Jade or anything else if you wanted. All right, so the next thing is that it didn't have um, hot reloading enabled by default. So like when I went ahead and uh, I started changing server-side code, I'd have to refresh the page uh, in order to get some of that stuff to to uh, take effect. Um, however, also with this hot module replacement um, that I've added to this, like you can actually upgrade, uh, add new controllers and all that stuff. There's no need to restart and uh, it just finds it. Um, so then the next thing is like, uh, what else did I have to do? I had to add some stuff to the package.json and that is for running things concurrently. So to run things concurrently, I use this npm run all, because what I've uh, I have a separate basically a separate compilation that's occurring on the client side, since this is just a server side stack. So again, it's a server side stack. It really just gives you a RESTful API. I added MVC so I could have templating, static files, all that stuff. And then from there, what I, I added the compilation process for TypeScript and React. And that's a little bit complicated because TypeScript and React uses something called uh, TSX files. And that just means uh, that it's a TypeScript that contains JSX. So I had to go ahead and create a Webpack config for that um, so that it could actually compile the client-side code separately. So here what it's doing is it's listening for the TSX files and it's com um, combining all that stuff into one big uh, bundle JS file that then gets exported as a bundle.js file here. So this is actually all the compilation that is occurring. So to show you this in action, if I go and open up into my uh, integrated terminal here, I'm gonna go to my root directory. I don't know why I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so this is the root directory of the project. So I'm gonna say npm run dev. And then this is gonna concurrently run both of those processes. So one of them being the server side nest.js process, another one being the client side 
react JSX, create the bundle file and, um, and smash that all together. And you can see the terminal down here because I'm using NPM run all is actually combining two separate parallel processes and putting all the terminal uh, output on one terminal versus two. So that way you don't have to maintain multiple different terminals. And then here is the example. So this is using the CSS. I didn't even mention the CSS, but I, it was part of the static stuff that I, I mentioned there. But here is it's reading this. I'm going to add SAS compilation. I really hate Tailwind CSS, but I'm going to add the option for Tailwind. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a bunch of starter code. Um, and I'll just share it with you with you guys. Uh, but I feel like this is a great project. It's a great project for like a all around batteries included solution. And um, a few of the things that I'm going to be adding and I'm working on right now is authentication authorization. Um, but for right now, though, you know, just playing with it for a few hours, it, it's been a lot of fun to get a server side stack running in Next uh, or Nest.js, and then also to be able to get it to integrate uh, well with a modern uh, UI architecture as well. So there's a lot more re reasons to use this. Uh, if you guys are looking for more reasons, really you want to check out the documentation. The wrapper behind uh, around Express, it just saves so much time when it comes to like middleware, uh, when it has like custom logging. There's all these different examples for different databases. Uh, if you want authentication, uh, use JSON web tokens, all that stuff. The guy, it's really one person that's behind most of this project. But it's one smart ass mother, uh, you know, it is one smart, smart person, um, smart dude. I think he worked for Google and uh, I don't know what he's doing. He's from Poland. But anyway, he's obviously one of the best uh, web developers I've ever seen. But he basically built most of this project and everything that I've seen so far, it just seems to work really, really well. All right. So if you guys are learning web development and you guys want to learn with me, then check out my website, codehawk.com. I have a really good deal where you can get all my uh, videos for one small price. And I'm going to be releasing new content as well, including on Nest.js and everything I talked about in this video that I really just recapped. There's a lot that I would have to explain individually, line by line. Uh, but you can look for my type of content on my website, codehawk.com, if you're interested in learning how to do web development.